Hello, I'm Anthony. Today we're going to have a walkthrough of Archeria's latest release. This is the Bus Transient plugin. Bus Transient is a transient shaper. This is similar in many respects to a compressor and you'll often hear these two devices being compared, but they do perform very different jobs. The reason why comparisons are drawn between the two is that they both operate on a sound transient. This is the very high energy moment at the beginning uh, of the making of a sound that very often defines its character. A lot of the um, individuality and personality of a sound is very often contained in the transient. Now the way these two processes differ is that um, a compressor is responsible for squashing the sound, um, chopping off highs, raising up quiet lows to a, a middle point, and then generally or typically um, increasing the overall volume of the sound to produce a more homogenized or smooth effect. A transient shaper, on the other hand, is exclusively interested in time. Once a transient occurs, once the beginning, the initial impact of a sound occurs, transient shapers are then interested in a set and specific period of time over which they're going to perform some sort of gain staging operation. It might be to boost or attenuate that sound, or it might be to shape uh, the sound's EQ in some way. One of the advantages of using transient shapers is that they're less colourful. They, um, they introduce fewer harmonics into the sound. Compression can be quite a harmonic laden effect. Whereas transient shaping, because it's primarily um, to do with gain control, is a far less intrusive process. And as you'll see today, it can be a very powerful and flexible way of very quickly solving multiple different issues with your mix. Without further ado, let's dive into the plugin and I'll show you some real world examples of it in use. We have a song in the background that I'm in the process of mixing. I'm gonna loop over an eight bar section of it. I'll give you a very brief um, introduction to the, to the song generally. So this is the, the entire mix as it currently stands with no transient processing on it. If I turn this off anyway. Now I'll throw away all of the rest of the music so that we're just left with the, with the rhythm track. The mixing of this song is complete, but as you'll see when I turn this transient processor on, there are quite a few issues that, to be absolutely honest with you, I should have solved earlier, but it's a great demonstration of what the tool can do. Firstly, listen out for how much reverb we have on the kick and the snare. There's too much. I'm actually gonna use the transient processor to control this, because what it's gonna do is identify every sharp moment, every transient, it's gonna give that a slight boost, but more importantly, or I suppose as importantly, it's going to control, it's going to attenuate everything that isn't transient. So it's literally shifting the energy of the sound towards the beginning, the impactful moments of the kit. Here we go. Now I'll turn this up a little bit more dramatic than I would probably end up with in the final mix really in order to drive the point home. But can you hear how clean that sound is now? I'm just gonna pull the overall volume down while we just look at it visually for a moment. So what you're actually seeing here is the middle of three frequency bands. If I click on the brown or purple zones, the transient shaper is separated into three frequency bands. Now you can reduce these. If I pick this left hand bar up, I can double click it actually, but it's functionally the same as dragging it all the way to the left hand side. And I do the second with this same divider. I've turned it into a single frequency zone now, which is simply um, having a single operation. As I bring these curtains back in, we reintroduce the low band um, frequency processor and the upper band. So we've got independent control of these three frequency ranges what we're going to do first is concentrate specifically on the lower frequency range. So I've got the curtain, I can't remember what it was exactly, but it would have been around 130 hertz. So it's going to be primarily concentrating on the kick and the low part of the snares. Let's get the sound back up. Let's have a listen to just the low end of the rhythm. We can solo just the low frequency band. 
Now, from this context, so at the moment we're just listening to those low frequencies, everything below this 132 um, hertz cutoff, I can now disengage or engage the transient shaper so you can hear the, the shaper um, actually acting on that part of the sound. You hear all of that reverb air come back when I disable the transient shaper. And you can also hear those kick hits are much sharper now. I have to very carefully control the volume as I bring these frequency bands in. Let's bring the middle frequency back in. So I've basically soloed two of the three frequency ranges. I've thrown away the, the high frequencies. But let's just concentrate on the mids. Again, I'll turn the transient shaper off. That snare is really reverb laden. So let's say I've taken too much away. I've sterilized that snare drum a little bit too much. Well, you can see what it's doing on the graphic analyze on the graphical um, display here. It split the transient up into two, se two sections. Firstly, we have the transient stage and if I ho hover over, um, get into the habit of using Arturia's IntelliSense uh, the pop-up help at the bottom of the window. Every control that you hover over, it's going to tell you what it's doing and it's just great. So if we hover over the transient attack, sets the length of the transient shaper's attack. So this is the initial period of time over which it's going to do something. Well, it's boosting the gain by 3 dB. So we see this gain, the, the, the spike in each of these transients um, is being pushed forwards. But then secondly, I'm taking away a lot of the body, almost 10 dB. That's an awful lot of gain reduction on the rest of the sound. So we have effectively like a median gain here. And if I just fiddle with this body value a little bit, you can see in real time the transient shaper adjusting its impact, both in terms of the gain, boost or reduction, and also the length of time over which that boost or reduction is applied. So let's bring it back up now. It was somewhere around there. Let's have a look what that sounds like. So let's say I decide that's too much shaping. I've taken away too much of the body. bringing some of it back in. I'm still attenuating 5 dB from the, 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 the sustained section of the sound. And now let's bring the bass back in. Okay, great stuff. And finally, we'll have a listen to what's going on up at the high end. So this time I'm doing much less work. I'm essentially leaving the transient alone, and I'm actually elongating the body. I'm just giving a little bit more tingle, a bit more fizz. Let's just uh, mute that for a moment. So that's a very gentle boost to the body. Bring them all back in. And now we're hearing the whole transient shaper. Remember, you have to click on each of the zones to see what that particular frequency zone is doing. Mute the effect. Can you also see that we have an input sensitivity on the left hand side? This is determining when the transient shaper is going to trigger. If we draw another comparison, with the compressor, this is effectively the threshold. And as you can see, I have the input sensitivity set quite low. If I adjust this, you'll see more transient action triggering. Now, the transient shaper is identifying far more moments. It's far more sensitive to something, any sound, triggering its transient processing. And you get far more of these transient shapes 
being introduced. So getting the input sensitivity set to a value that's going to do the job for you is critically important. We also have a clipper. In this particular um, instance, I'm not using a clipper, but this could be used to introduce uh, saturation by overdriving or clipping the sound uh, once it reaches a particular threshold. Let's have a quick listen to that. So this little red mark is indicating that there is now clipping, there's now saturation being introduced. Really crush it. There we go. So it's almost acting like a bit crusher at that point. Let's have a look at a second use case of transient shaping. I have an instance set on one of my guitar tracks. Now this guitar track in question, um, I recorded it years ago. This is, this is a, a very old piece of music that I got around to turning into a song a few years ago. And this guitar line is massively over compressed. It's, it's really poppy. So I've turned the transient off. Just have a listen to what we've got here. absolutely compressed to within an inch of its life. So what I'm going to use the bus transient for here is to catch those initial transients and simply perform dipping. I'm just going to take away uh, some of the energy from the sound. I'm not compressing the sound at all. It's a pure volume control. So if I turn it on, you can see that I'm now operating on a single frequency range and I've identified that dipping three and a half dB off the transient, the first 37 milliseconds of each of these um, guitar notes. Once again, I've set my input level very carefully to catch the, the, the primary notes, the stuff that I'm most interested in. It's just taking away that harshness of the compression. So let's have a listen to that coming in and out. We'll start with it muted. It doesn't have that violent kind of unpleasant compression pop anymore. It's just dipping the volume a little bit. Now it's quite clear if you listen to it in solo like this, that there is audio ducking going on there. That's exactly what's happening. I am pulling the volume down. And so listening to it on its own, you could make an argument to say that's because of an artificial sound, but in the context of the mix of the song, that effect entirely disappears and you're just basically left with the absence of that unpleasant compression pop. It's a subtle effect, but that's annoyed me ever since I wrote this song, and I'm, I was really happy to find this as a solution. There were probably any number of ways I could have individually sculpted uh, the audio on every single guitar note but here the transient shaper has just done that job for me in one hit and here's our third instance of bus transient on this song and this time we're operating on the master bus so this is basically operating on the entire sound so this time the bus transient is doing a very different job because it's operating on the entire song we have to be much more careful about how much gain staging we perform on any particular sound because there's all sorts of sounds going off all the time. It's the entire mix that we're listening to here. What I'm going to do to start with is get the song playing with the, um, the master transient processor bypass. Then I'll bring it in. Hopefully you'll hear this significant step up um, in quality, in clarity of the sound. And then we'll go back and figure out how it's getting there. Sense of falling, and here's the same old pain. Oh, 
Let's have a look at what the bus transient's doing and I'll bring the volume up and down as required. Again, when I in introduce this um, power button at the bottom of the interface, I'm toggling on and off just the base element of the transient processor. I'm leaving the other two in, um, in place. If I wanted to bypass the entire plugin, I would do that with the bypass option at the top left-hand corner. Let's have a look at the mid frequencies now. Uh, this is the majority of the sound. 8K is really quite high, so the upper band were just dealing with the tingliest of air but the majority of the energy of this song is being caught by this middle frequency processor. This is the most important one. So we have a 3 dB boost um, for the transient phase whenever basically it identifies a significant transient, but the rest of the um, piece of music is being left unaffected. Just as a matter of interest, by the way, in terms of kind of loudness comparisons, it's always critically important to make sure that you're not just preferring loudness you look at the top right hand corner of the interface I'm dropping and I've basically have had a, a 1.3 dB impact on this sound by introducing the transient shaper and I'm lowering its overall output by that much right down at the bottom of the interface you can see I have a loudness meter and I have meticulously loudness matched all of this to make sure that we're only hearing the improvement we're not hearing simply a louder signal which always sounds better so this is the important zone. Let's have a listen to what the mid-frequency process is doing. So don't forget everything in the music that's being identified as a transient. It could be a sharp syllable from the vocalist. It could be one of those impactful notes from the guitar. It could be the kick or the snare. Everything that has impactful energy is being boosted, which by definition means that the rest of the song, the rest of the energy of the piece of music is being um, de-emphasized. Finally, let's have a look at the upper frequencies, everything above 8K. Boosting the transient by 5, 5.5 five dB, the body by less. You can actually see visually if what you're dialing in with the transient shaper is going to do any harm. Because what you don't really want is any very dramatic gain staging operations being performed. Each one of these transient shapers looks sensible. If I do something that doesn't look sensible, looks overly dramatic... You know, if you're listening to volume changes that are that huge in the piece of music, then that's going to be smacking you in the face every single time every one of any one of these things happens. Of course, I've just made those adjustments without us listening to the piece of music. I just had to repair that mid-frequency there because it would have absolutely ruined the mix. Let's have a listen to this high stuff. So you can hear, there's just more fizz. Being brought in with those transient accentuations. I have to say, I'm very impressed with the bus transient. Uh, it's showing up a lot of deficiencies in my mixing because things shouldn't be sounding this much better with the use of a single plugin. But I'm treating them as learning moments. I'm going to go back and basically figure out, well, I've clearly put way too much reverb on this piece of music and I'm using the transient to fix something that ultimately I need to go back into the mix and forensically correct. But the truth is that one single plugin at the end of the bus with less than maybe two or three minutes worth of tweaking of the initial options provided to me, I basically started with one of the, pre the presets that seemed to be closest to what I was after and then very little configuration from that point onwards to get it to the point where it was actually sounding good. It goes to show just how important transients are. This is a tool I can imagine using an awful lot going forwards. Hope you've enjoyed this demo today. Please hit like if you did. I'll see you again. Thanks very much.